and it has to be brought up, but Troy Kwan is like, like maybe fired, maybe not fired. <sighs> And I was on the phone, all of us were on the phone with Scott Greenstein and Steve Blatter and whoever the fuck would listen to us. Yeah. And w none of us want him fired. Period. No, no one. No and one I think fired. there's some weird tug of war going on upstairs because they're having meetings. You know, I basically told <clears throat> Scott Greenstein, I, I personally called in a favor. I'm like, look, I, I could vouch for the guy. We don't want him fucking fired. He does very good work for us. Yeah. It was an unfortunate uh, on air fight. Yeah. That went a little too far, but Troy Kwan even admitted it went a little too far, and that he doesn't, uh, he, he's not going to hurt anybody. Yeah. He's not going to harm anybody. And his track record, he's been here for years, yeah. making shitty money, and, and, and the guy shouldn't be fired. They should do something else. Yeah. He's not officially fired, but it's weird that he's still, you know, he's, he's suspended without pay. And we don't get any kind of... We, they've not given us any info. And Greenstein, when I got him on the phone, he basically said, "We're, you know, the company wants to fire this guy. We want him fired. I'm like, slow the fuck down. Let's talk about this. I said, look, you know, the type of radio show we do, we get really edgy. There's been a million horrible fights on this fucking radio show. Why yeah. is that one worse than the others? And the guys are trained to make to, to make it more, you know what I mean? It's like people know that we're going to replay it the next day. Yeah. Troy knows what's expected of him when he comes. How right. many times has he walked in here kind of with a smirk on his face? Right. So, what, you don't like Danny? No, I don't like him. And he goes right, right in. It's like he I, understands yeah. what kind of his role is here. Yes. And it just got a little bit too much the other day. After the heated fight with Mark Zito, where I, I would absolutely admit it went a little too far. Yeah. But I also went home that day thinking nothing of it. Like, I know Troy didn't mean any of the shit he was saying. He went on Ron and Fez immediately after the fight, basically, with a calmer head explaining everything to Ron. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that should have been the end of it. And then I reminded Scott Greenstein of the time Bubba Love Sponge wanted to fucking punch me in the fucking face. He said he's coming up to New York just to punch me in the fucking face. All right. And he also uh, encouraged his listeners to punch me in the fucking face. Right. I think that's way worse than what Troy did. Yeah, because that was Because he was getting serious. listeners involved and shit. Uh -huh. I was a little concerned, but then also, but I also know how radio works, so I knew it was going to be okay in the end. Yeah. Yeah, no one has any... No one has any thoughts that, that Troy's going to do anything. But I think, like, Scott sort of hinted that, you know, he's he's, he's going to save him. But then I think there's lawyers involved and HR involved upstairs. So I think I real I talked to Troy yesterday because he's trying to figure out what the hell's going on. I go, yeah. I think there's a weird tug of war going on right now. Because Scott fully understands that none of us on this on this show want Troy Quan fired. There's not no. one person. No. Not at all. So I, uh, you know, no one ever, no one thinks Troy's going to do anything violent to anybody around here. It's it's ridiculous. They have these zero tolerance policies where you know, right. oh, if you do, we do, they don't even look at like the context of anything. Here's what happens. All right, right. we do this or the winking that's going on. Like, right. look, I'm really fucking pumping this up for the radio show right now, right. and people are loving it. I'm getting people talking for you guys for yeah. the Opie and Anthony show. Yeah. Yeah, this didn't happen in a broom closet. This was no, on the air. This on was a very the public view. air, which we always <sighs> thought was a safe place. And we tell yeah. them it's a safe place. We yeah. always tell the guys in the stand, hey, man, say what you want as long as it's yeah. on the air. Right. Yeah. So, if it was in the in an office down the hall, different story. Much different story. But uh, it wasn't. I feel like I talked Scott out of <sighs> you know having Troy fired, but now I haven't heard anything in a few days. And uh, I heard they had a meeting yesterday, and I think there's some weird tug of war going on. Because yeah. I, I don't trust the lawyers at all. They never make the right decision. They just get, they just fucking, you know, pull the trigger way too quickly and get rid of, you know, talented people that fucked up. Yeah, he fucked up. I don't think he fucked up right. as far as our show goes, but from a company standpoint, yeah, sure, I guess he fucked up. But not to the point where he should lose his livelihood. Well, me and Jimmy talked to Scott yesterday, and uh, oh, oh no, that's right, didn't. we didn't. He wouldn't see us. Oh, that's right, we were summarily dismissed. Why? At the door. Who knows? You're kidding? No. Oh no. We walked up to the office. Right. Uh, we were waiting there because he was in uh, his office with somebody. I, I had gone at nine o'clock to see, to this assistant. Can you tell him that I want to come by at ten for five minutes? Right. Because I was gone. I know he wasn't here Friday either, but uh -huh. right. Um, oh, I said I said at ten. Now, I did get a call from Bladder about that. So me and Anthony, I'm sorry, go ahead and tell me. We went yeah, down we, there. we went down there. 
we're going to, you know, go into the office in five make, minutes. Yeah, make it clear. Plead our case for uh, Troy. Of course. And uh, he pokes out. He goes, yeah, yeah, I, I, I can't do this. Uh, uh, I got it. I got it, though. Opie told me everything that needs to be uh, told. Uh, this is this. That I got it. I got it. I got it. Uh, I, and, and pretty much treated us like a board op for the 60s channel. And just like just pretty serious, dismissed. he should have met with you guys dismissed for five minutes us. yesterday. Well, he, was at, he was at a meeting with uh, yeah, but he could have said, "Could you wait for fifteen minutes?" I, I agree. It's I mean, I knew twenty it. minutes, whatever the fuck. Exactly. He was in a meeting with a chief financial officer, so they were doing something. Right. And Bladder called me later that day, and he said, "Look, I I asked about it, and he said the reason he did that, and, and I still am furious up, but this was yeah. his explanation, yeah. was that no, no, I had it, I knew I knew what you guys wanted, but it was it was it wasn't the fact that we didn't get to talk to him. It was just, and Anthony felt it too." It it was like, it was like, hey, these two jerk offs are bothering me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's we like, were hey, dismissed. sorry, there's a major thing going on with our show, and management always complains. Hey, you guys don't come to us, so we calmly go <laughs> right. down. Yeah, and that's and then what we we're get. treated like two jerk offs. Yeah, I yeah. Was like, Why would we ever go down there? Oh Christ! Christ. <laughs> yeah, that was great. No one. I'm gonna reiterate. No one on the Opie and Anthony show wants Troy fired mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. We all understand how this shit works. Okay, yeah. it went a little far, yes, but not to the point where Troy would do anything outside this fucking studio or mm -hmm. even inside the studio. There's been no. times he, he he knows that he can't touch anybody. We all know that. Right. And, the, you know, the show's in a good place right now, and this would be a real fucking bummer, a real bummer for everybody. <sighs> yeah. Human resources has a job to do, and it's like, they, at times what they do, do is... Do they? Yeah, I mean, they, they, really? they stop they? women from being... Not they, a, they stop <laughs> certain things from stop happening. Stop women from being sexy. But they, but they, they, I get it. They have a job to do, and they're, 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 they're the line between the corporation, and this is any company, and, and lawsuits. That's yeah. what their thing is. I don't get it. And I never will, Jimmy, because but, I've been... I'm uh, sorry. I, I don't... Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I mean, I, get, I do get I, why I they're... That's okay. I get uh, why they're there. Right. But they overextend and they read into like this. They have to understand the context of the show they're dealing with. It's like your job is to stop certain problems from happening. And we all right, that's your function. Yeah. This is not hmm. one of those problems. This was an on air thing that got made more because it's on air and both guys know they're being listened to. You have to take that into consideration. This is not an argument that you overheard in the copy room. Right. I have a real problem with HR being involved with entertainment companies, period. I've been I've been on the radio since I was 18. I've been around edgy radio for a really long fucking time. And for many years, I don't even... Did AF have a HR? I don't think so. And I don't even think any W did uh, at first. No, it was just the GM and shit. It was the GM and stuff. Shit. And somewhere yeah. along the line, these companies decide they need a human resource uh, department. Yeah. I'm here to say I, I spent many, many years on the radio, uh, around edgy radio, never seeing any real fucking problems where you would need human resources to come yeah. in and, and clean things up. Right. So, so with that said, then you you, you bring in a human resource uh, department and you bring in some of these fucking lawyers and they, they start seeing problems that aren't there in the end. Because they have to justify their job. They're yeah. not. There's no problem with Troy Kwan. Yeah. They but they are seeing the problems the, the, that the, just aren't there. Because if they're just, if, if no problems happen for a protracted period of time, then people uh, will go... Do we really need this department? Well, right. Let's cut back and so they make problems. Right. <laughs> they make way more problems than 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 uh, solve problems. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and that's the problem I have with uh, yeah. with those people. I don't even know who the HR lady is. I have no idea. I have, no, stuff. I have no desire to ever meet her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't. Uh, they, uh, it's never good, but you have to deal with them. It's no, never good. No, because they, it seems like they never will err on the side of, oh, okay, I get right. it. That's a part of the culture of the radio show, and this wouldn't happen on the show I listen to, but on your show, it's understandable <clears throat> how two guys would yell at each other like that and then shake hands after, or, or, or they could see each other in the hallway and never ever have an issue. Yeah. It's like they don't know the difference between that. And the guy that comes in in military fatigues because his ex-wife is cheating on him. Right. There's a great difference right. between those two people in the workplace. Yeah. We live in a very, very different world in this studio. Very different than even mm -hmm. uh, most of, I would say, just about every other show here at Sirius XM. I mean, the, all, uh, the only other show would be Howard. Yeah. It's us and Howard that live in a really strange world where there are going to be, like, crazy on-air fights. Never a fist fight. 
Certainly not on satellite radio. We right. had we had fist fights at NEW, and even those, uh, you know, worked themselves out. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. but this isn't the '60s channel and or or all these other fucking the morning mashup and all that crap. This is a much different world, and we should be graded at you know as such. So I just had to get that off our off yeah. our chest because you know no one out there knows what's going on, and it's, it's time they do. Yeah, we wait here now to fucking see what happens. We're but I think powerless. there's some weird fucking tug of war going on. I think Scott heard us loud and clear. <laughs> But I think he's probably getting the ear of the lawyers and HR, and it's just a thing that is happening. So I just wanted to reiterate once again that there's not a person on our staff that wants fucking Troy fired. And there's not a person on the staff that thinks Troy would ever do anything. Yeah. Anything. Especially outside the studio. Well, that's a good idea. Like a hashtag, justice for Traquan. <laughs> well, you were there. You, Sam was there. It's like you, you knew it wasn't getting crazy. You would have stopped. Obviously, you've been in the studio a million times during things. He's an irresponsible you've broadcaster. You've seen almost everything that happened in here. And you know, Sam you, you know the vibe of when two guys are just, you, you know what's going on. Yeah, I mean, I, I told everybody that I had to tell. I would have stopped it in a heartbeat if there was any threat of actual violence. Irresponsible and, broadcasting. You think that's what it was? Sam Roberts uh, is at fault. You were the captain of the ship that day. You had the con. You had the helm. Have there been any threats of violence in this studio before? No. <laughs> Never one. No, not a right. one. No, not a, a one. Not a one. mistake. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even think there's ever been real threats. We've talked a lot of shit in here. Yeah. I can't think of any time. Well, yeah. I, freak, I had a fucking fight with Jesse Ventura in here. Right. I had I had a fairly Ooh. nasty argument with Chris Jericho. Right. Neither time, I mean, with Jesse, that last moment, I got like a little worried. You're when wrestlers, Jesus. But it was really weird. Like you never think, oh no, there's going to be an explosion of of. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you understand that we're both talking to a microphone, and, and everyone involved kind of gets that. Mm -hmm. There's literally been staff members that say, "I want to punch you in the face. I want to cave your yeah, head in." Yeah, right. Well, and oh, Duffy, yeah. It, but it, and it never happens, so. though. Yeah. And people bring it up. I mean, they're fans of radio. You know, this guy, Pat on Long Island, already on Stern show, tried to punch someone and never got fired. That was another incident. Well, that's a whole different animal over there, you know. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, we're shit. We're pieces we're, of shit. Yeah, we're shit compared left to Left at the that. door. Right. Because, you know, Bubba yeah. was allowed to fucking threaten me because Bubba was connected to Stern at the time. So yeah, they didn't do anything about. They did nothing. I even sent I sent the audio clips to Scott, going, "Hey, remember this?" Yeah. And then I didn't cry like a bitch to any lawyers or human resources, by the way. But I said, "Remember this," because I'm trying to save Troy. I'm like, "You do remember this, right?" The guy threatened to fucking come up from Florida, which he never did, by the way. Of course he didn't, to punch me in the fucking face. Yeah. And then when he was too fucking lazy to, you know, get up to New York, he told his listeners to do it. That yeah. that wasn't a problem, obviously, for the company whatsoever. So why is this a problem? Hmm. <sighs> so ridiculous. We'll see what happens. Mm. But the silence, I don't think, is good at all. Yeah. I think there's a weird tug of war going on. And we're not being unreasonably defending someone just because they're a part of it. The there's been people who've been let go from this show. That, that nobody on the show said anything about because at the time we felt like it was the right move. Like, we don't just run in and blindly defend every person that's let go. Right. Hey, you can't let them. There's been times where they made decisions that were like, all right, you got to do it, you got to do it. Yeah. So it's not like we unreasonably fucking scream and yell every time they want somebody. This is just not right. It's the wrong decision to make. He's a great worker. He's not. I've been on the road with him in, in fucking crowd situation. He's fucking Dude, great, man. The guy's we, great. We just got back from Montreal only a couple yeah. days before the fight. He was unbelievable up there. He did everything we asked of him. Yeah. Everything. Even shitty little dumb jobs. Yeah. And there's nobody. The gathering is this weekend. There's nobody. I'm not going. Oh, Sam. With anybody oh, else. about you. Oh, oh, no. What about me? No, meaning Troy is the guy. <clears throat> I know. That you would have went with. Yeah. You don't want Iraq to go with you? Yeah, Iraq could step up and go to the gathering with you. Yeah. Iraq gets easily distracted on trips. Oh. Iraq, that's true? Sure is. <laughs> <laughs> <He's off mic. laughs> sure is. Uh, Are you going to the gathering this weekend? No, I'm not going. Why not? We might need you to. I wasn't. Yes, your story made no sense. Oh, I would go. Hey, did you just hear? This is what Jackie's dealing with on the phone. She's going, "Yeah, your story made no sense." <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh! 
Oh, thank you. Because, yeah, I'm on. Uh, okay, I'm on Twitter and I'm reminded of something. And I got a message for Fez from Ron and Fez. Troy's not going to do anything to you. So stop with the nonsense. Okay? I think he knows, doesn't he? Yeah, he stopped. Did he stop? Yeah, I think, yeah, I, they yeah. Actually went to, I think they actually went back, both of them, and said, if there's anything we can do to help him. No, I, I think those guys oh. actually stepped Stop up. with the nonsense. I don't think he's after He was it. scared to come up here for a few days. Stop. Seriously, stop. It's not helping the cause. You're, you're, you're on the Opie and Anthony channel. We're trying to save a guy. And, and, we, and we had Fez for a few days scared to come up here. Because he thought Troy was going to do something to him. Oh, no. There's not one person that thought Troy was going to do anything to you, Fez. Oh, no. no. I don't give a fuck. Enough already. Oh, no. But it, it, it worked itself out? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think those guys went back and said, do we need to write a letter? Like, I think they were actually proactive. Uh, Ron and Fez. I think we're actually proactive. Okay. To, to the, well, then, fair enough. Then that's the whole story. But last I uh, left it, I, I heard he was scared to come up here. So if, the, if he did that, then that's very good. Thank you. So trying to save Troy Kwan. Christ. Save Troy Kwan. I mean, I will say, if, if Troy wasn't here, th th there'd be one less guy for the girls to look at. Oh. <laughs> Maybe, <you laughs> that know, could be. You're making some lemonade, are you? All right, yeah. now that he said that, okay. You know, it really is humiliating when the stripper's in here and he fucking wanders in. And, like, he doesn't need to pay for them. <laughs> it really is <laughs> humiliating. Good point. But yeah, he's a, he's a, we're not you know we're not blindly defending a guy, man. He's a, he's a good worker and he's a good dude, and yeah. we all feel comfortable. I wouldn't feel comfortable with somebody who's going to be violent in the studio. Nobody would. And we we live in an environment. We've said it many times. <laughs> like we could get fired today. We don't. We never know because Ooh. our our type of show is so much different than every other channel except for Howard's uh, on Sirius XM. It's so different. Yeah, you can't. They're never going to have problems like this on any other fucking channel. And w if they did, then it would be so obvious there's an issue. Right. But on, in our environment, it's almost like it was just a regular day. That would have been completely forgotten. That would literally, I never would have thought of that again. Exactly. Hold after on that off. day. Yeah. But if, I don't think the guys upstairs that are like, you know, trying to, get, trying to get Scott's <laughs> ear. Oh are educated enough on what we do and how it's much different than any other radio show in the company. No, they see it the same as they would fucking some guy that's spinning on the lithium channel. Right. Or, yeah. Right. The same exact thing. Everyone. And we're not saying, you know, we're above the law here, above the rules. No, but our rules, but are, the a little rules are a little different based on, you know, what you do. Right. You know, because what we, you know, what we did yesterday, maybe it's not. And okay, today we never know. We just never fucking know. No, I, I don't think the guy you know doing sixties on six ever worries that he's going to lose his fucking job because of something he said on the air. Do you remember that day Sam was lobbing fucking uh, uh, tissues at Pat Duffy or papers at Pat Duffy's face? <sighs> And Pat Duffy it was ready to rip Sam's head off. Was growling. Yes. And okay. go, I'll fucking kill you, whatever. <laughs> and Sam was just fucking. I was like, what a ballsy little cocksucker. Oh, but Sam's it was a little gnat. But in he, but, face. but he knew, like deep down, it's like you knew that the guy. Like, it sounded so much worse than it was. Mm. I guess because we were in the room and you can see things that people can only hear. But uh, it sounded like Sam was going to be fucking murdered on the radio, and he's continually lobbing them. But we could see, like, Pat would walk up and growl or whatever, do what he was doing, and he was annoyed. But even he knew in that moment, you don't go beyond a certain line. Like, right. you don't. Right. You just don't. And uh, watching that and being in the room with that, you understood what was happening. Whereas if you're listening to that, you're like, there's a murder going to happen. Right. Mm. And, you know, if, uh, if the fight... That Troy and Mark Zito had, you know, continued outside of the studio. It didn't. No. Then it would be tough to defend. But as soon as you walk in that door, it's a it's a very different world. Mm. And Zito is fine with it. I hear he is. Yeah. All right. He's so. Fine. All right, well, we made our point, I guess. Well, if Zito's not fine with it, I'll fucking take him. Oh, did you guys really? Shouldn't you walked down the hall and he, he just... Yeah, after I told his assistant at 9, like, I'd like to see him at 10 for a couple of minutes. Just, you know, we only need a couple minutes. And he didn't say, hey, guys, could you wait? Or, hey, I talked to Opie. <sighs> I'm in the middle of a meeting, but we are cool. I did talk, and I'm going to fight for you. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't like that where we would be reasonable. It wasn't apologetic. Yeah, it wasn't like, hey, look, I'm a little crazy right now, but yeah. I, I, I have your message. and I'm. He's probably in a tough spot. It was probably feeling the pressure. I don't know. Pretty much. Well, I got it. I don't need to hear from you guys. And then, and then he like walked back into the office as he was saying something like, uh, hey, "He shouldn't have said that on the air." 
Yeah. Say. It was basically beat at your jerk offs. Right. Yeah. Scram. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Like, you wonder why people don't want to talk to management. That's why. It's yeah. like, you know, it's not even that we didn't get the yes that we wanted or we got a no. Right. It was just that that horrendous moment. It's like, Jesus, dude, we just want to. We're not, we're not yelling and screaming. We're coming down reasonably to sit down for five minutes, just maybe present the point that hasn't been made or. Right.